Hello, everybody. This is Gerrit Reininghaus uh, signing in from Gauntlet Community Open Gaming. We are playing a game of Getting to Philosophy today. Getting to Philosophy is a game by Jason Morningstar and Lizzie Stark. It will be published later in 2020. And we have the honor to be able to already play it because the rules are in our hands. And we can use them to create something extraordinary out of it, an actual play session of this game. This is why we are recording. We have already done lines and veils before uh, we started the recording. This is the safety tool um, where we fix like what kind of content we would like to see excluded and which kind of content we are enthusiastic about. And when I look another time at that, we see that we are enthusiastic about celebrating winning in this game. We love to degrade losers and uh, classism and intellectualism are also part of this game. However, I think we are ma more making fun of it than making fun of people intellectuals sometimes make fun of. Let's see. We will maybe later discuss that a little bit. Um, we have also plenty of stuff which we don't want to see in the session. It's also not very likely, but it's good to know that we want to put a veil on homophobia, suicide stuff, sexual assault, racism, etc. So far, uh, Lines and Veils, we also have the X card. Whenever in the game you feel like there's content uh, coming up which you don't like, then just, just say, can we X card this article? And so you can continue elsewhere, the person who was X carded. Um, finally, the door is always open. If you don't enjoy the game, you can just go. And uh, it's, it would be nice if you could tell us that you go. So we are not worried about your health. If you just disappear, that might be might be problematic but like internet collapse can happen anytime for anybody and the others can just continue because um, this game doesn't depend on one single player um, except for me um, <clears throat> not, not not actually not even on me and also um, people are more important than the game okay so getting to philosophy getting back to the topic is about an, a Wikipedia article which proves that most uh, articles on the English Wikipedia, when you follow the first proper link, like which is part of the definition, which is not in brackets, because often you have something like Latin or something in, in, in brackets. But if you follow the proper first definition, then in more than 90% of the cases, you f will end up after a while at the term philosophy or you end up in a loop. And so you play this game by pretending to be philosophers or just intellectuals arguing about something and we decide about what we argue. Then we use random Wikipedia articles to come up with our argument. And we can try that together. I will share my screen with you. This is my screen. Here I am on the English Wikipedia and here on the left side I have random article. I click on it and let's assume we would have decided to talk about the sense of life and then I need to find an argument what I will, the argument which I will defend for the rest of the meeting has something to do with hero Hiroyuki Kojima, a Japanese mixed martial artist. He competed in the welterweight division in the 80s and nine, no, in the 90s. All right, mixed martial arts, sense of life. So I would say, obviously, competition. Life is about competing. Like we talk about Darwinism and so on and so forth. So this would be my argument. But how do I defend my argument? maybe with all the knowledge I have, everything what I have studied. So what do I have to study? Wikipedia. So in this game, you start your argument defending your point. Competition is the sense of life in my case, by clicking on random article again. And I start with Comanche Station, a Western film directed by Bud Brittica. So there's a lot of text. And when it's my turn, so we go around in a circle, when it's my turn, I will defend my point. Competition is the sense of life with just using arguments 
I extract somehow directly or indirectly from this article. This is about making a movie. It's about being dead or alive. This is what I read here, dead or alive. That sounds good. Lane prefers dead, so she won't be able to testify against him. So I might argue that actually, that in the time, in Western times, Comanches and the colonizers, they were fighting and the, the army was about how to kill tame Indians, how terrible that was. But in the end, humankind progressed through this experience, competition. You see, we enter already very difficult territory. So the x is maybe well placed on the table, um, but it's just about logic, right? And it's just about an argument and we are not really listening. It's always good rhetorically to refer to somebody else, but just to draw them back into your own swamp of arguments. So now I'm done with my argument. I have argued a little bit like two or three minutes. I hand over to the next person. And now I need to click on the first link which is CinemaScope in this article. And since we are playing with more than two people, we click three times. So CinemaScope is one click. Next is Anamorphic Lens. And the third click is Cinematography. And now I am at this. And next time when it's my turn again, I only use Cinematography as my argument. This is a lot of text. so. I have plenty of material to use. Yeah. When it's again my turn, until then, I follow this link again. And here, as you can see, ancient Greek doesn't make sense because that ends you in a, in a loop with Latin. And, but instead, it's motion picture is the first real definition. Yeah. If you end up on an article which doesn't please you, just click to the next article or click random article again. Yeah, if it's just like totally not working for you for like X card reasons or if it's not fun. But this try your best to make sense of what you what you get. From film we get to visual art, from visual art we get to art itself, art forms and so on. So we are getting close to philosophy already. All right? And this is one way to end the game. You are the first person who reaches philosophy. Signal that to us or write it in the chat um, that you are there. If we just don't understand you, just write it in the chat. Um, and then we will all finally give up and agree and bow down to you and support your argument and be fully with you. If you are the first on philosophy. If you are the first in a loop, also write that in the chat that you are in a loop. A loop means that you pass by an article where you have already been. Um, and you will also win. Or when 30 minutes are over, the game is also over, but then we come to a peaceful conclusion. Then everybody is like supporting each other. That's the only way not to have a winner. So we need to speed up at the end to have a winner. All right. Um, that's all <laughs> about the rules. It's so easy, isn't it? This is not the question we want to discuss. But the first thing we need to discuss is what is our argument? And we can already all click on random article. Um, for a start. And to discuss now what our argument could be about. It could be very philosophical, but we also had already city planning. Like what is the right way to plan a city could also be our argument. Or how to raise children, also a very important topic. Or how to, how to work with history, anything. <clears throat> Does anybody have already an idea what our argument could be about? We have plenty of ideas. I have the 1960, 1968 Texas gubernatorial election. So we could talk about the systems like um, democracy and um, uh, monarchism, communism. Oh, yeah. Different systems of government. Yeah. 
that's good. The presidential system <laughs> of France or the representative <laughs> system of Germany. Yeah. <laughs> Originally, we, we had a parliamentary system, not a presidential one, but yes, now it's presidential. 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 Well, you, you are the nation who tried it all. But uh, since uh, I have the 2011 uh, Lehigh Valley Steelhawks season um, of indoor football franchise, <laughs> uh, We, we may argue maybe about um, about uh, maybe the uh, a big government ruled by uh, indoor sports. Oh yeah, maybe that is your argument. Yeah, um, that sounds good. Yeah, I I have the article of Jatrai Jatra, which is uh, a bad. A heist thriller from Nepal. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> with mixed responses from critics. <laughs> um, and I think like, I think a country is best governed by monks. Sorry, that the only thing which comes to my mind when thinking of Nepal is monks. That is just me and my problem. Yeah, a monk, monkus tree is the best way to rule a country. That is my argument. What about uh, Tatiana? Well, actually, uh, the very best way to rule a country is, uh, well, <laughs> I have um, Novos Paskoye Ulyanovs Oblast, which I uh, don't think I pronounced right. <laughs> which is a Russian urban locality with 11,000 people. So I think, um, no, that's not, yeah, yeah. I think um, the best way to rule is um, that every, like every city and every village should just rule itself and that's it. Uh, so I think we should go back to these, um, yeah, town, town-esque, um, Government. Wow. From city states to town states. Great. Uh, have I summarized uh, your argument correctly, Michael, in, this, in the chat? Otherwise, just rephrase it. Yes. Yes, of course. Sport competition is the best trail to, to, to run a country. And uh, absolutely not uh, local, uh, local small small towns or monasteries. Is it is it a thing? Monastery. No. It's okay. my. I, I wrote a book about it, so it is. Oh okay. yeah, right. <laughs> oh yeah. Sure. Um, it was not PR, right? Mm. <laughs> And uh, Lawrence, what is your argument? Um, my argument, I, had, I have the ISSPIC, the International Symposium of Small Particles and Inorganic Clusters. So, of course, um, the best way to um, rule a government is, first of all, in an, in a, uh, in an, in an cluster, um, which, um, it, no, 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 the best way to govern is um, if you think about the smallest particles you can imagine in a, in a society, which is only human. So um, humans can only govern themselves. Um, if there are football players, maybe. Okay. Okay. Or something like that, yeah. So now we also have an order in which we can argue. Um, are you ready to argue? And by the way, this is a role-playing game. So if you want to be a character, just be a character. If you are just yourself, the way you argue, that is also fine. So this is your opportunity to put your, like, a silly hat on or your glasses like this. 
or get your bottle of wine in front of you because we are good philosophers. Um, anyway, what is necessary? Or you, a moustache? Glasses, glasses is always uh, good to make uh, people look smart. So. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and and if you want to bluff, yeah, yeah, you put your poker face on. It's also good to have like dark glasses, mm. so yeah, they can't see how you you really, if you are really like panicking because of such a good argument, the opposition yeah, has brought. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. All right. Then it's time to click on random article because unfortunately we can't st start with the article which gave our argument, but it is something completely different from which you need to start to argue. So we each click on random article. And now in the chat, we have an order, Gerrit, Michael, Tatjana, Lorenz, and then it's Gerrit again. And when your argument is over, when you have put your point out to the public. Then you click three articles further down into Wikipedia. So when it's your turn again, you again have new material to work with. And right there in the chat, when you reach philosophy or let us know somehow in the way you argue, maybe we also sense it that you have reached philosophy <laughs> or if you're in a, in a loop. And 30 minutes means at 55, um, the game is definitely over and then we will all agree with each other, but I will also write that in the chat again. Okay, but uh, here we are and uh, it's good that we finally found a way together to make a decision about how to rule this country. Um, I think we all agree that the current government and the solution people have found is not working anymore. We are in the 21st century. The world is different and that is not only something we recognize, but like looking back into history, looking like nearly 800 years back, the vizier of the Sultan Muhammad II, Abu Abdallah ibn al-Hakim, he already was a, a great philosopher and he understood that you can't properly rule a country if there's no theological foundation there but a theological foundation that can't be some kind of pope. But we need a class, a proper class, an elite of theological thinkers, which can only be a group, a larger group of a, a couple of thousand people who then get a leader out of them, but stay at the same time as humble as monks usually need to be. So the monkistry, that is the way forward and Abu Abdallah ibn al-Hakim, in my book, I cite him also very often. He was one of the first to actually realize that. And the, when Sultan Muhammad II made him Grand Vizier, and uh, then the Crown Prince, the future Muhammad III, um, came in power, he was like severely punished and he was forced to flee. And that was because of his political wisdom, which was not yet ready for reality. But now the time has come. Right, my dear colleagues. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, uh, I don't think uh, that um, an elite is the right way. I think anybody could be uh, an elite. I think um, uh, anybody could uh, bring themselves to uh, to be the elite. It uh, just requires some um, hybridation, uh, like, for instance. Uh, do you know about the Aikma Belindia, uh, which is an uh, hybrid cultivar of uh, the genus Aikma in the Bromeliad family, of course. Um, as everybody knows, I have a PhD in uh, botanics. And also I teach at Hogwarts. So um, this plant has the, um, the ability to, uh, to as the, uh, the uh, the quality of being an hybrid. Uh, what is an hybrid? It's when you cross um, things that are imperfect to make something perfect. So I think actually um, elitism is not the right way. I think everybody could be uh, very right 
uh, you just have to cross everybody with uh, indoor football uh, or any any sports. Uh, maybe maybe indoor football is not the right one. It's just the no, the one I know best. That on that all the experts uh, agree that is the best. But uh, of course, uh, it could be uh, it could be uh, the, all the experts may be wrong, uh, Doctor uh, Garrett. But yeah, uh, I think uh, you take anybody and you make them a football indoor football player, and then they uh, will be able to rule because they will know uh, the interesting uh, value of uh, community, friendship, uh, showers, and uh, the like. This is my argument. What do you, yes, what do you think, uh, my uh, dear colleagues? Well, I think actually um, you are on a bit of the right track, but not quite. Uh, speaking of tracks, I would like to use the metaphor of railway stations. Um, because uh, as we all know, um, um, like people who are who are humble but uh, intellectual, like like uh, my humble colleague Garrett said, um, where do they enter the train that is politics? They enter the train at the railway station and they leave the train at the railway station. The in between is is well, it's there, but it's not as important. And also as well. Um, where can these things like football games that strengthen our community, where can they happen? They can, ha can happen only um, at the railway stations. They can't happen in the train. And it's the same with um, cities and countries because the country isn't, isn't a thing. It's, it's just multiple places that are far away from each other. Uh, where you have to cross a long distance to reach each other. And that is why you can't make politics between them. But every, every, every town, um, every city and every railway station has to make their politics on their own. They have to govern themselves. Otherwise, it won't work because you can't make politics on the train. You have to use the railway station. That's it. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't think every thing useful could be said prior to uh, after this but you can try well 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 so i see every one of you has just one point you think about the humans in the government you think about um monks you think about railway stations and you think about very crazy ideas about football but there is one similarity, and this is there are humans in it. Think about it like the, the famous scripted reality crime procedural of Germany, Lenzen and Partner. Where is Lenzen and Partner today? Nowhere to see, but where does it where does it come from? It comes from the famous, famous, famous courtroom show Richter Alexander Holt. And the courtroom where where, you, where did you get the, something like this? You get in the courtroom something like justice. And why get you get justice? Because the, the, the judge is a human. So the only thing um, in which um, we can um, govern is govern us self, govern self. So you just have to think about um, what do I and what are doing the others? Like our famous... Richter Alexander Holt and Lenzen, Ingo Lenzen. He, he was a very famous, famous, famous lawyer and it, it just worked because he is a human and he can govern himself. So yeah, I think this is the most important thing. You have to govern yourself. Oh. Mm. You have to govern yourself is one of the first principles in philosophy. Govern your own mind and free your own mind from what else is going on out there. Govern yourself and just yourself and let those whose spirit has grown beyond govern the rest, which is the monks. And there we go. The monks can play football if necessary, they can live in towns, in every town we can have monks, but we need the monks. And the history of Spain has shown that as well. 
In the history of Spain, you see a long tradition of philosophical and theological streams moving through history. And most and well known is for sure Seneca and this, in the time of the Roman Empire. And he's from Spain, he resided there. And he lived peacefully with other kind of monks together, like the Muslim, the Jewish, and the Christian philosophers of the time. They are all kind of monks. Ibn Arabi, Averos, Maimonides. Then there was a Ramon Lul, who was uh, also from Spain. And they all developed a kind of consultancy for their governments to bring them to something we nowadays know is called enlightenment in which has brought the wealth and the richness and the wisdom and the knowledge to this world and football. Um, and in the end, it was due to these monks that we are where we are. And now, finally, 21st century, we are ready. We are ready for them. You just have to let them in. <clears throat> yeah. Let's sing letting people in that is a very good idea that is actually um, that uh, i think you you are referring to uh, because uh, letting people in allows reproduction and as we know uh, reproduction is um is about uh, making variations to the genes to the gene pool and uh, making sure making sure that all species um, at one point or another uh, get with less and less vulnerabilities. Of course, mutations uh, do not uh, do, uh, do well with, with that and uh, there are new vulnerabilities all the time. Of course, you know what I'm uh, referring to when I say that. Of course, uh, you, uh, you understand that uh, the metaphor of uh, reproduction is like uh, Pierre Bourdieu said, uh, uh, reproductions of uh, elites and monks who, by the way, cannot uh, reproduce uh, in a, a lot of uh, different uh, philosophies, um, are not, uh, not are just the elite reproduction. reproducing. So I don't think um, this uh, this kind of uh, way uh, is is the best way or thinking that uh, anybody uh, can be a ruler of themselves like uh, Dr. Um, Lorenz said. I think um, a just middle can be reached and the middle is easy to see because what is what is the link between monasteries, railway stations and courtrooms? Do you know, my colleagues? The common point is that you can play football in any of these places. Yes, you can. So you can govern all places by playing football in it and settling all conflicts like this with friendship, teamwork, and showers. Thank you. Well, well, I think there's quite some bit all of you guys got wrong. I'm very sorry to say that, by the way. But, um, well, um, if we look at uh, Asia uh, in the whole, which is a very large, uh, it's, it's the largest continent and which has a very um, a history that is full of so much advancement and so much interesting um, things that happened in the past. And they have a very a history that they can pr be proud of. And it's not because they played football, because football isn't even a traditional sport in Asia. It's also not because of the monks, although they have monks, of course, there, but I think the key to their success, I'm sorry, I'm still speaking, my dear friend, the key, yeah, yes, yes, listen, please, the key to their success is 
well, if if you may, like, be polite for a minute. The key is that they have so many big cities um, that are so, ma so so different, and they are allowed to be different. They, all of the people could just govern themselves, but not like as a single unit. But yeah, you don't have to look that like that way. Not as a single unit, but because in 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 a group of people that take care of each other, that are close to each other, which is a city or, or a town. And that is the key to the success of the continent Asia. Um, so you really think that the key of the success to Asia is something which you deliberately um, brought up? So no, the key to success for Asia, the key to success for Seneca and the Muslims, which are basically, which are, by the way, have, nothing in common because there are 600 years in between and the key to common point that football is no the, the the common ground on human society is communication communication in politics in families this is the real um deal so you can you can talk about seneca and muslims just in a way like we communicate we can talk about we can play football of course but what do you need for football you need a team and what do you need when you if you are in a team you need communication what are you need what the, what are doing the asians they are communicating so that this is the key to success but yet now think about it what do you need to have proper comp communication it's people it's just one people and another people which they communicate with each other. But if you really think about it, if you really think about it, um, you don't need, you don't need um, in a communication um, just one opinion. You have to be, have more opinions. So everyone should govern their, themselves so that everyone can develop their own government and their own um, opinions so that you can communicate with each other and with, uh, with us. We are doing it now. So what I'm proving now, my point, and this is very important and every one of you should listen and think about it. Um, you, you can do everything what, what you are proposing just with that you can, that you are govern yourself. This is the real, the real deal, governing yourself, not having um, football games or Asian things, because at the end, communication and self-governance comes whoosh, together. Yeah, that's my point. Talking about governing yourself. But look at the piece of land where you stand and dear colleague Tatiana, you brought me to the idea talking about like a continent like Asia is massive and we are standing on top of it. We are standing there like little ants in the desert and the continents are moving. Like tectonic movements, volcanic eruptions. There's nothing we can do. We are helpless. We are useless. We are just crumbs on the crust of Earth, on a planet flying through the universe. And these continental movements are a good metaphor to explain to you that we can't simply rely on a humanocentric perspective. We can't continue in the 21st century to just play games. And the concept of town is like from the from the antique times or even before this is the future my dear colleagues and in this future we need spiritual leaders which have a, a sense a sense even for tectonic movements which can like let their minds flow across the planet from continent to continent and sense what our society needs for eras like until the next ice age this is where we stand 
I, I hope that is wasn't too abstract for you. <clears throat> abstract, no, it's uh, very concrete. Actually, I, I don't know why, uh, Dr. Garrett, you um, talk about continental uh, things uh, to, uh, to do a metaphor about spiritual leadership. You see, um, life, life has been a struggle for many uh, philosophers to define and many um, spiritual leaders as well. They cannot define life. Are they able to, uh, to say, um, uh, for instance, uh, if being alive is, um, is a, a state that is, uh, that is real, or if it's just a projection of your imagination? They can't know that. What we only know is what uh, we feel right now and uh, the joy we can feel. Did you know in Asia there is uh, at least 500 clubs of football? Indoor football, I, I must uh, admit, I must uh, say, because uh, outdoor football if of is, of course, um, silly. Um, 500 clubs in Asia, which means, uh, Dr. Lorenz, that every single of the individuals of the teams uh, of the Asian uh, 500 teams in Asia selected for self-government they uh, because uh, as we know uh, they, uh, they, they, they can choose for themselves uh, they chose to join a team and to uh, relinquish government as a team and to re relinquish even in uh, some cases uh, their whole freedom on their lives for uh, football. What can that teach us about life? Life is complex, but mostly what we know is that we have to enjoy it. So I say, why not with indoor football as a self of self-government? Well, the answer, of course, is easy because um, there's a much, a much more wholesome way of governing ourselves. Um, because as Garrett rightly said, we are all just crumbs, like we are just ants on, on, the, uh, crust, on the Earth's crust. But in joining and in communicating, as Lawrence rightly said, uh, in, we become like a single body um, flowing in the universe. And this happens not because we like follow our own minds and govern ourselves, because that would lead to the, the body um, like crumbling in very different parts that couldn't survive in the universe. But because we give up ourselves and instead become part of a community that is the people that are around us, that holding together, like with gravity, we become a astronomical body that can govern itself, that can survive in the universe, that can grow and, and yeah, like a plant. And this can only happen and work in like communities like a city or a town where everyone can have like everyone is a, can be a part of not just the monks not just the elite not just the goddamn football players but everyone and they they don't even have a single voice but they have a shared voice the shared voice of the body in the universe uh, esoteric nonsense um first of all first of all um you you um Mike, you talked. You, you did talk about the the football clubs in Asia. Five hundred, five hundred eleven players. So it's five thousand five hundred fifty-five. Let us be thinking about how many Asians are. Five. It's more than five thousand five hundred and fifty-five. So 
you do, you doesn't you you don't prove anything if you say indoor football clubs. Let us think about the real deal here. The real deal here is linguistics, because linguistics, and then now we are back to to communication. Linguistics is the the mindset in which um, we can basically think about language. And language is important. Do you know how many languages there are? Probably more than there are people in the world because everyone invents their own language. It's just dialects. And if you think about it and you get it right, then everybody, everybody speaks their own language. So to have to speaking an own language and to you have to constitute something you may have your you have to build your own constitution and in this constitution it's your own language so there is not only the not not only an urge to um self govern yourself but it's a need you have to self govern yourself so and if you think about it like um yeah the universe and something no you, we, we don't have to think like this. You, we don't have to think like, oh, yeah, there is an, there is another uni universe. No, we have to think about ourselves, the reality, and which we have to do. Yeah, this is my point. Dear colleague, Dr. Lawrence, I 100% I agree. Uh, we need to stick to what is real. And what is real here is a serious issue with finding a new government. And it, it's not about like fulfilling your passion project here, but it's like coming to a conclusion, what is good for the country. And let me take you mid on, a, on, a, on a little mental journey to, to maybe bring us to a better understanding of what is going on here, which is like the Cambrian explosion, which was like the beginning of life on earth. Uh, there's like a, we can still find biogenic graphite uh, 3.7 billion years old, like from, from meta-sedimentary rocks in Western Greenland. And this is something which is a direct evidence of life on Earth, which is such an amazing thing. And it is real. And it has, it was a game changer. It was like from a dead planet to a living planet, such a change. And it could only happen through an injection of intelligence. Injection of intelligence which was like life, like organized human beings. And the injection of intelligence, and like we have football already, right? And we have humans already, and we have towns already. What we don't have is like a spiritual elite, which brings us forward, which is pushing us into this new millennium. <clears throat> I am sure uh, injection of intelligence would benefit a lot of people, Dr. Gerrit. Um, now, um, I must say, uh, Dr. Lorenz, uh, you did uh, say some awful things uh, about Asia and uh, essentializing uh, the continents as if they were the, the, the same people. So I must uh, say uh, sorry uh, for uh, the people in Asia that are uh, watching us because that is awful to say. Uh, the uh, 500, and, uh, 500 uh, teams of indoor football um, are watching you, Dr. Lawrence. Now, um, Dr. Tatiana has uh, come to uh, very spiritual con conclusions with uh, shared voices and uh, this kind of things. And Dr. Garrett has uh, become uh, well aware about uh, the beginning of life, which was my last argument. But any of you uh, have ever considered um, what uh, Immanuel Kant uh, referred to as a, a dimension? Uh, a dimension, uh, he wrote in uh, the famous uh, text in uh, uh, 1783, that everywhere space has three dim dimensions. And that space, in general, cannot have more dimensions, is based on the proposition that not more than three lines can intersect at right angle on one point. This proposition cannot all at all be shown from concepts, but rests immediately on intuition and indeed on pure, pure intuition a priori, because it is apodictically demonstrably 
certain. What he said uh, is important because he uses the, uh, the French word a priori, uh, which are French words, so uh, it means that uh, he knows uh, what he's talking about. Dimension is uh, most important. You have to have a dimension uh, of a government. You have to have an arena of some kind, maybe of three or may, maybe even four points and what four points uh, are making is actually a parallelogram. And as soon as you try to, uh, to make a society, you try to make uh, all the angles right, so the points are becoming a rectangle, like a football field. Thank you. Well, that was well, that was some pretty complicated um, explanations for something that is actually very simple, and uh, I would love to just break it down for you all just one more time, um, so that you can understand what it's actually about, what finding the right politics is actually about. So, um, because what is good for the country is not, yeah, of course, what is real is good for the country, as Professor Dr. Garrett said, um, but. It's like in reality, it's like the, branch, the branches of science. Because like we have so many, we have the whole world to understand as scientists. You all know that. And we do this in many different, like under many different words that we give, that we give the different branches and we create these branches. Like for instance, there is mycology, which is the stu study of fungi, and which is a branch of biology, biology that focuses on fungi. Uh, or we have the science of living things. Um, we also have, um, we also have um, earth science, we have um, zoology, uh, bacteriology, uh, and all these different branches. And we need them because we can't exist if we all, if every scientist just thought for their own, like like Lawrence uh, Chomsky uh, has uh, proposed. Um, that won't work because people wouldn't cooperate and society would just crumble. And instead, we need we need these differences. We need to make different. Um, groups of people find themselves and stick together and help each other and where that happens is in small communities or even bigger communities of maybe 100,000 people but the important thing is that they are close together that they that they are in a range where they can see each other so that they can react to each other so that they can actually govern themselves and answer to each other to each other and it can't just happen in a football stadium because there, what is about all the what about all the people who don't play football? You would you would totally lose them. But instead, you need to take every human and band them together in towns, and then let them let them govern themselves as they wish. Okay. First of all, I don't I disagree with you. Um, I'm I'm very disappointed of of Michael that you take your, take yourself. Um, Immanuel Kant for your for your French people and because a priori oh, is a is a is a French word. Um, it's it's not a French. It's Latin, and you are doing something which is with empirical evidence uh, absolutely false. Um, you can see it because think about the the the, the notion of you. Um, the notion of a posteriori, which is basically the more important thing about um, the critic of pure reason. Think about what um, Tatiana sa said. Tatiana uh, talked about the branches of science, which is basically a posteriori knowledge, um, which is an important thing to say. Um, it's not about um, the a priori things. Of course, you, ch you, you have to do it with them something because of that you then you can think about the a posteriori movement but think about in a more in a wider range you think about the the french and the the liberals and whatever but i am thinking about georg friedrich oh no there's there's the green skin it's 
<laughs> Hegel, Hegel, <laughs> think about Hegel. And then, then we can come back. And where, to, what, and where do we lead to from Hegel? To Adorno, which, which doesn't work as well. So, okay. Um, so we basically see that what is more important than these philosophers? Money. And what, where can we get money? Um, from ourselves. So we have to govern ourselves. Hegel. Dialectic. It all comes together. It's like my eyes are open again. Finally. Dr. Michael, thank you so much for bringing up Kant because that led us to Hegel and Hegel led us to Adorno, I don't care. But I, I, it led us to dia dialectic. And I can tell you, finally, I think we don't have to disagree. I think there is a way to govern society with respecting all our theories in one. And I think this is also exactly the way astrobiology went and um, I also have a PhD in astrobiology obviously and so I think this is a good opportunity to tell you a little bit about it because it's such an interdisciplinary field encompassing like like research on the origin of planetary systems organic compounds in space rock water carbon interactions and abiogenesis on, on earth and planetary hab habitability and what they discuss has a lot to do with what we are doing right now like habitability it's like a society how to inhabit it as an individual, Dr. Lawrence. And bringing points together to a rectangle, like a football field, that is like a piece of paper. That is, but this is also a market square in a town, Dr. Tatiana. There's like a lot of things which can go together. And I would say monks are possibly a good source of wisdom in this kind of world as a contributor playing football in between towns celebrating the individual what do you think <clears throat> interesting interesting um uh, so i will uh, of course not uh, respond to uh, the uh, the famous, uh, well, Dr. Lawrence is famous for uh, their uh, invisible Hegel um, argument, uh, which is to show uh, a book of Hegel that is actually invisible uh, to, uh, to try and make a, an argument that nobody uh, can uh, refute. Uh, but um, but I, I must agree with, uh, actually, uh, it's very uh, interesting because I agree with uh, Dr. Tatiana. And uh, in a way, uh, I agree with um, Dr. Gerrit uh, uh, because um, he, he did agree with, uh, with Dr. Tatiana. Um, I agree that uh, the, the thing is the, the most important is uh, to, to get to togetherness. Um, when we stop talking about uh, which science is uh, best, and when we start uh, imagining that the uh, branches of sciences uh, are getting together uh, then um, it does not matter if you uh, you are in um, uh, symbolic sciences and uh, algebra or particle physics or development developmental or cognitive psychology or law ethics economy planetary science or cosmology doesn't matter because all are equal and um, the best thing to uh, to make uh, people equal is to have uh, a kind of meaningful uh, activity together as uh, as you may uh, as you may uh, uh, understand from uh, what i'm saying is that um something uh, somewhere where you can put uh, at least a thousand people from uh, from a town together uh would be a rectangle, a rectangle with a green grass. Uh, maybe it can be bigger than actual uh, indoor football, of course, but uh, it can be uh, a huge stadium indoors, of course, because uh, one does not like when it trains. 
um, and you put everybody together, scientists, non-scientists, um, monks even, maybe, and uh, all, of, all of these individuals, they come together and they, they just uh, play to rule themselves. And I think this is a beautiful idea and uh, I hope you will um, see that uh, we all agree on that and that this is the, the best uh, government uh, that we can uh, find, of course. I completely agree and I must say I'm so glad that you all brought these arguments because you have you have also you've opened my eyes I'm I'm no I'm not awakened because I seem so much more and I I know that which is different from knowing how because I don't know how I don't have I don't have have I don't have propositional knowledge or uh, constitutive knowledge oh no I have propositional knowledge I don't have procedural knowledge but actually to say it in this description of it, which is saying that I know that I know that each of you is right somehow because if we if we as as societies as just as people which is different humans who all need to to find their own opinion and thus to govern themselves um if we work together like on a community level in towns in cities but also listening to their spiritual leaders to their monks while also while also doing um the the, the fun stuff that they need to do to exist like the football playing if we do that we can only profit and speaking of profit um i found lawrence's last uh, dr lawrence's last argument very interesting and i would like to ask you all if you would uh, maybe consider writing a paper together all of us so then we can can get funds uh, for a research so that we can profit and get money uh, yeah i'm just laying it on the table it would be great um i i have to end this discussion with a quote of Dennis Lindley, which he wrote in Understanding Uncertainty. Um, there are some things that you know to be true and others that you know to be false. Yet, despite this extensive knowledge that you have, there are remain many things whose truth or falsity is not known to you. We say that you are uncertain about them. You are uncertain to varying degrees about everything in the future. Much of the past is hidden from you and there is a lot of the present about which you do not have full information. Uncertainty is everywhere and you cannot escape from it. And what I think is, I'm very uncertain about my epistemological state. What I'm certain about is that Michael's argument is absolutely right. And that um, I don't know why I, I I thought about something completely so completely nonsense. Michael, I have to apologize about all the Asian slur and all the things about what I said about the the indoor football clubs in Asia because um, there are 5,555 people who are um, perfectly um, perfectly in the best way you can govern yourself. Thank you. Thank you all dear colleagues and thank you all players for playing Getting to Philosophy. We found an agreement and a perfect way to govern our society in the future. I stopped the recording here now, but feel free to stay with me for a moment. Bye bye. <laughs>